Welcome to the Insom Insider. Welcome to the Inside. This is the Insom Insider, your source for Oracle Apex tips, techniques, methodology, and really wherever that discussion takes us. I'm your host, Monty Lachelet, coming to you from an undisclosed location inside the Beltway of Houston, Texas. And with me today is my good friend and member of the Insom family, Michelle Scamini. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. And at the helm, keeping us on Hello, time. Monty. <laughs> what a rookie mistake. I am here and finally unmuted. We're better than this. We're better than this. At <laughs> oh, the helm. I'm sorry. <laughs> keeping us on time and task is our producer, still French-Canadian, Mark Rule. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's Thursday. October 8th, episode 18, and thank you for spending a piece of your afternoon with us or your morning, wherever you may find us. We're coming to you today through the miracle of Zoom teleconferencing, and Michelle, I'll tease out, perhaps for the last time, you'll need to check out what we have up our sleeves for episode 19. Uh, we're back better than ever, tanned, we're rested, and we're ready to do this again. We asked the community what topics they'd like to see. They responded, and we're going to deliver over the next few months. Uh, Michelle, today the topic is women in Apex, and I have to say, I'll take just a second, I'm so proud to work for a company that, that you know, doesn't have discriminatory hiring practices. Uh, Michelle, you, you were hired because you're great, not because you're a woman. I wasn't hired because I was a man. I absolutely love the culture that, uh, that the management's put together at Insum, and uh, you know, it, it kind of gives us a great platform to have a conversation like you're going to have today, women in apex and everything can be on the table. Uh, I think it's a great effort uh, or it's a great idea. How did you, how did you um, come up with this? Great question. Well, you know, when we first started the insider, one of the things we talked about a lot was that we missed the conferences and the opportunity to go and connect with people. And in the past few years, you know, one of the elements of the case scopes that I really enjoyed was the women in technology event. Um, and and I, I guess I realized I was missing that and, and wanted to get to know some of my colleagues, some of the women in the community a bit better. And in the absence of some of those forums, I thought, you know what, we're you and I were coming up with with content for the insider, and I thought, why don't we why don't we invite some of these women on? I you know from a selfish perspective, really looking forward to getting to know some of my colleagues. I see I see their names, um, but don't necessarily know them very well. So this is a great opportunity, and I I feel we aren't very visible, and I'd love to see what we could do to get more women participating in the community, uh, and just encourage encourage more women to to join us. So. So yeah, I, I put the idea forward. You seem to like the idea. And, and I'm so excited that, that we managed to get some, some really interesting and talented women to join us today. So I'm looking forward to a good chat. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to uh, participating the entire hour as well, Michelle. Ha ha. Well, on that note, <laughs> you just gave me a great segue. I'm going to boot you out of here. Thank what? you for coming on and doing the intro. What? But this is a this is a ladies only chat for now. Um, and so if you don't mind, I will catch you next week. Okay, but I'll be watching. Great, please do. All right, my lovely ladies, if I could ask you to turn your cameras and mics on and join me. Hello. Hello. Hi, there. Here we are. Hi. Oh I, I feel I feel the need. We should all look into our cameras and smile because this is going to make a great Twitter image. So yeah, right. three, uh, two, one, cheese. <laughs> oh, all right, ladies, it's just us for now. Um, so first of all, I want to say I'm super excited to have you all here. I'm really looking forward to, to our session. Um, the last couple of weeks have been great because you've been sending me your bios. I feel like I've had the opportunity to get to know you all uh, a little bit better. I'm very conscious of the fact that there are 14 of us on here today. I think we've got a lot of material to go through. And um, we have a bit less than an hour because Monty you know, did his thing. Um, we have a general idea for what we wanted to talk about today. Let's see how it goes. Um, 
maybe I thought we could each quickly introduce ourselves before getting into the conversation. So I will start. My name is Michelle Scamine. I am vice president here at INSUM. I'm involved in a number of different initiatives, both on the consulting side, but also marketing. I have been uh, working with Apex since 2003 and Oracle since 1997. <laughs> So that's me. Uh, Monica, maybe, did you want to go next? Sure. Yeah? All right. Just introduce yourself. Just, just quickly, we'll go around the room so that everybody kind of, you know, knows a bit about ourselves, a bit, yeah. a bit about us. Okay. My name is Monica Godoy, uh, and I joined the Apex team the last year as product manager, and I have been using Apex for seven years. Great. Um, Bo, did you want to go next? Hey, you guys, I'm Bo English Richling. I'm a director on the Apex team, and I just joined about a year and a half ago. I help with all of the product management, customer enablement, sales enablement, and product marketing. Great. Sharon. Hi, uh, Sharon Kennedy. I work for Oracle on the Apex team. I do mostly special projects. Um, I'm going to predate everybody. I started working with Apex 19 years ago before it was Apex. Um, I worked with my Kichwa He's my direct manager before mm. it was called Flows. And, uh, and I started using Oracle technology in 86, which I don't think anybody's going to beat me on. And uh, oh, oh, Christina's <laughs> got her hand up. That never happens to me, 86. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I will have my 30 year anniversary with Oracle come December. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, Robin. Yes, hi, I'm Robin Dyke. I am with Oracle. I'm on the um, Apex application team doing the COVID apps. I've been working with Apex for 10 years and I have been working with Oracle databases and Oracle products for 25 years. So Sharon has me beat on that one by a little bit. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Keegan. Hi, yeah, my name is Keegan Walker. Uh, I work as an Apex developer and project leader for an aerospace company. Um, I've been working with Apex for probably about four to five years. So I have a feeling I'm the, the green one in this call. And I'm excited to talk to you ladies. Glad you could be Thank here. Thank you again. Um, Karen. I'm Karen Cannell, uh, TH Technology. I've been working with Apex since before it was HTMLDB because I was working on a project with Oracle Consulting um, with Anton Nielsen. Uh, some of you may know that name. Oh, we and know Anton a little or bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, and um, so I have those same connections all the way through. And um, been working with Oracle since 85. I bet you Christina has me beat. <laughs> Well, Christina, why don't you go next? <laughs> no, Karen, you got me beat on the year. My first application was published in 1986. It was a database application, but it was not Oracle, but I started working with Oracle within a year or so after that. So by the mid nineties, I had done four books on database stuff. Um, I'm part of a company called Storm Petrol and all of our senior programming staff are female by accident. Um, I love that. So we're in by the middle of this week of doing Product launch. Um, I don't know. What else do you want me to say, Michelle? It's good. You'll have, you'll have a chance to tell us more in a bit. So you run your own business. That's great. Um, Gemma. Hi, sorry. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm laughing as my good friend Jorge Rimblas is messaging me, telling me to smile more. Um, oh, <laughs> oh Jorge's watching. Nice. <laughs> I'm Gemma hey, okay. Wood. Um, I've been working with Oracle Apex for about nine to 10, about nine to 10 years. Um, I started working with Oracle back in 96, um, and I'm the co-founder of a software as a service company that's built primarily on Apex and Ords, and I also do some healthcare Apex consulting. Fantastic. Okay. I don't want to forget anybody. Egle. Hi, everybody. My name is Egle Ledesma. I'm a senior developer at Insum. Uh, I would say I'm the youngest one in Apex. I, I joined the team uh, 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 two years ago, 
but I've been working with Oracle since the 2000, yes, so 20 years now. Nice. Doris? Uh, hello, I'm Doris Arruto. Uh, well, I'm working in IT almost 15 years and working also with Oracle but I'm um, starting to work at, it, at INSU in 2017 and I started to work on APAX um, in INSU. Uh, right now I'm working as software analyst and developer. Well, that's it. And you also are the equivalent of Mark on our Spanish version of The Insider. You've been <laughs> producing those shows, so thank you very much for that. Oh, that's um, true. <laughs> Ramona. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Just want to start with that I'm honored and humbled to be in the same screen, you know, <laughs> with all of you. I mean, um, I look up to each one of you and um, really I'm honored just to be here by our side and have the opportunity to ask you questions and stalk you from time to time on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, about a little bit about me. So I'm Ramona Berson. I've been with Inson since uh, 2013, November, first as an intern and immediately after as a full-time employee. Uh, not coincidentally, the 2013 is the same year when I started working in Apex. I fell in love in, with Apex uh, right away. Um, and since then, I'm doing just that. Um, before before um, doing Apex full time, I was a computer science teacher, did some freelance web development, but nothing as big as right now. So I guess that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Marlene. Hello, guys. Uh, well, I think I'm the newbie here compared to all of you. I only have three years with Apex. I'm a uh, developer in Zoom, and I have seven years working with Oracle. Thank you. And Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie McElroy. Um, I've been working with Apex since 2006. I am the Director of Product and Client Services at United Codes, which we have a number of Apex related tools. Probably Apex Office Print is the most well known, and I do I support those tools as well as develop internal applications to run the business and support our clients and products. And um, that's about it. <laughs> hey, thank you. Well, so what struck me when I was sort of putting this session together is, and I was reading your bios, is we're really quite a, an interestingly diverse group of women. So we've got um, the ladies from Oracle, we've got business owners, we've got consultants, programmers. So I think sort of it's a great opportunity to, to learn from each other. I thought maybe we could start um, with Monica. And Monica, if you would tell us um, a little bit about your, I know you have your Women in, Tech, Women in Apex initiative. You've got the website, the Facebook group, and you've interviewed some of the women on this, um, on this chat today. I wanted to know a little bit about what prompted you to, to start that initiative. Um, and if you could share a little bit with us about, about them. Sure, uh, okay. The reason was really simple. I saw uh, tons of boys, Apex developers, and that's fine, but I didn't find too many women. So I started asking myself if we were a really small group or if we were behind the scenes on social media. Uh, so, I started looking for girls in Apex and I interviewed them. Uh, you can find those interviews in uh, womaninapex.com. And my hope is that this encourage women to join computer science. I know there are more women in Apex, so I would like to make a request if I can. If you are an Apex girl, a developer, please reach out to me. I would love to know more about you and I would like to give, uh, to make you an interview, an interview. So I've, you've interviewed me and you reached out to me on, on uh, Women in Apex. I'm, I'm yeah. curious how, have you, um, have women been coming forth to you or, or have you generally been reaching out and, and, and having to dig and find them yourselves? yourself uh, no I have to dig you have to dig 
Yeah, I have to check out uh, if they uh, post something in Twitter, LinkedIn, and I have to write down the names and keep it in, in, the, in my eyes. Uh, I think the next interview is with uh, Keegan, and mm. I, have, I have her in the list, uh, but I really need a big list. So please reach out to me if you want to, to, make, to make part of the Women in Apex. So you, you mentioned that you, your original question was, is it that there are few, that there just aren't a lot of women around or they are and they're being quiet? Do you have any feeling about, what, what is your conclusion on that? Do you have any sense of, of what, what is going on? No, I think uh, most of the women in Apex are behind the scenes. So we have to dig inside. We have to dig uh, deeply, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. D does anybody have any, any feelings about that? I would love to see, you know, per speaking from a personal perspective, I've been part of the community and watching for many, many years. And it took me a long time to actually kind of dare to, I guess, to, to speak up, to put a tweet out, to blog. Um, so I think there are more women out there in that position, um, and I'd love to know what we could do to to entice them and get them to be to be more visible. Yeah, and if you if you have uh, some names that you can share to me, that will be so amazing. And that way, I can uh, reach out to them, and I can know more about them. I can give an interview, so it will be amazing if you can share some names. Sure. I know from conferences that women are definitely the minority in the audience, um, but there are some excellent women out there. And I know that from talking after a set, from talking with them in between sessions, from hearing what they're doing. Um, but the, the X, there's a ton of great, there's a ton of great people out there. Um, it's, it's very, I'll, I'll, I'll say it, it's, it's very testosterone heavy. Um, so I like to stuff. Oh, Karen, I'm, I'm afraid Tracy? you're breaking up. You're, yeah, you're breaking up a lot. Yeah, one thing, Michelle, I thought of was if we had a quarterly Women in Apex online zoom type of meetup group or something like that and kind of support each other talk about what we're doing how to you know enhance our online profile and enhance our work and make ourselves known yeah just doing I something like that. that might like there's a lot of women i think like karen said at conferences i meet a lot of women they're not involved but they're there and they always come up to me afterwards and talk and i think a lot of them are really shy to be <laughs> judged as like to present to get into the community so just a zoom session where they could meet other women and kind of get out of their shell a little bit i think might help but even even not shy because I, I just wanted to speak up as somebody who's been in apex forever but hardly anybody knows who i am because i i left consulting to raise two daughters because i needed to stop being on the road oracle consulting just 11 years of it gave me all my gray hair but it was amazing too and that's when i went to work for mike and for years, David Peake would ask me, hey, Sharon, do you want to go to Open World this year for us? And I would say, do you need me to go? If you need me to go, I will be there. But if you're asking if I want to leave home and leave my children and travel, then the answer is no. And so I don't put myself out there simply because number one, I'm a private person and because I work a lot and I don't want to travel in my off time. But these sorts of sessions, are great. I can work these into my day. My children are now very well and grown, but I still don't really love to travel. So you're never going to see me hanging out in an OD tug, but it doesn't mean I don't want to participate. I just like to participate in a different way. Well, I'd be the first one to sign up for, for these, this quarterly Women in Apex Zoom call. So I think we should definitely do that. But then beyond that, beyond just this group, I think to Monica's point, we need to make sure that we're, we're finding the women to, to participate and join us. And, and so I think um, 
and and they're out there. I think it's it's a question of of reaching out and and being on the lookout and and but I, I would definitely love to to see more of these sessions. I think that would be great. But isn't isn't getting more people in Apex getting more women in Apex, getting more women in Oracle and getting more women in technology? I know in my little community in Virginia where I live, I do outreach at our local college and I go and speak on Oracle technology and I, I do put myself out there um, both just to speak for Oracle, but also to speak as a female in technology. To, to I talk to the computer science engineers and there's always very few women in the room compared to men, but I, I try to connect with them to show that like you can have an amazing career um, in STEM. And I did that for my daughters. And when I don't have to work as much, I want to do that at like the middle school level. I feel like I want to challenge all of you to find ways to outreach and to get to those girls in sixth grade, seventh grade, high school and college to let them know that you can have an amazing career in tech and don't let any sort of dissuade you from doing that. Do a lot of people not put themselves out there purely because of um, obviously in tech, there's a lot of very opinionated people. Uh, both men and women, and obviously you can write a tweet. Um, I've seen it obviously from people on blog articles, on anything someone can write, and within 30 seconds, there's God knows how many people ready to shoot them down on this, this, and this. And in a lot of the cases, you'll, you'll see things, and some will say, I'm very new to this. Um, I've only worked with Apex, or I've only worked with JavaScript for X months. And people come down on them like a ton of bricks. So I just wonder how many people, both male and female, sit in the background and say, well, I'm not going to put myself through this sort of scrutiny, whether it be on Twitter, whether it be presenting at K-Scope. Um, like, to me, I've always been kind of like in the background, I'll tweet. Um, I was going to present in Boston this year for the first time, but it had always been the... Um, the attendee reviews, frankly, that had put me off wanting to, wanting to present. So I just wonder how much of it is that is just kind of how scathing people can be. And, uh, and I'll admit, I can be one of those people. <laughs> Christina, yeah, you, yeah, were, yeah. you were waving your hand about, you nodded when, when Gemma was talking about uh, scathing. Yeah, I mean, I, I was blogging a lot and regularly, and I was supporting those with tweets. And then people just became mean. And I'm like, well, I don't care. I don't care about you and I care about me. So I shut up mm -hmm. and I'm very fine with that because it's a lot of effort and um, I got other things to do than get sniped at by idiots. So, yeah. Now I've had good experiences presenting at Open World. I presented on a Apex uh, automation piece I'd written for the infrastructure I was working on and I had, I had good reviews and I plan to continue to present um, at, you know, at ODTUG, at uh, Open World, whatever comes up. It's just we're in the uh, COVID thing right now where we have to do it online. So th there can be good feedback on that. I do see where a lot of the blogs are getting hammered. Um, but perhaps we could support each other, you know, run things by each other. Hey, does this make sense? Put it out there and be there. That is great advice, actually, because I think... Uh, I agree. One, one, of the, one of the barriers that I've often felt before putting a post out there is how sure, am I really confident in that the material I'm about to put out there and that I'm producing is, is good stuff? Um, I had an experience a few months ago where I put something out. I think it was, it was generally a, a really good post. It was well received. Um, but there was something in there that I put, it was, it, it was, probably not the best suggestion. And I was lucky enough, I had Jorge, who someone mentioned Jorge's on the call. Um, he reached out to me in private and he said, hey, Michelle, you know, great blog post. Uh, just, you know, on this one piece, you might want to rethink it a little bit. There's, you know, a security risk. Um, and I thought that was great. He, so there are people out there who are looking out to be, and this was before I joined Insom. It had nothing to do with the fact that I was a an insom colleague, but there are people also out there that are that 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 are willing to help and and want to and 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 aren't looking necessarily to to um, make us look bad or or be horrible. And I think I think we just have to try. And and things won't always be perfect, uh, but I think just putting ourselves out there. And and I know that I'm glad I I didn't 
stop producing content because I know a lot of the stuff that I have produced has been very helpful. So I think um, it's, it's uh, I think being um, confident in the fact that, that people aren't looking for us to fail. Um, and there, there, there are people out there that wanna, that wanna help and, and give good advice. I was, Jorge, by the way, in case you haven't uh, noticed, I was very grateful for that outreach at that time. He's, he's getting way too many mentions on this call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle, uh, sorry to interrupt, it's Mark. Uh, we got a question from, uh, from a, um, a listener. Um, and the listener is uh, Joel Kalman. Uh, and he asks, uh, I'm curious, what do you think the Oracle Apex team can or should do to help the women in the Apex community? Also, what can the Oracle Apex team do better to help promote a positive, helpful spirit in the community generally? That is a great question and actually a great segue into what I wanted to talk about was we had our, our ladies from Oracle here. So, so maybe I can turn that over to you and, and, and tell us a little bit about what it's like working at Oracle and, and to Joel's question, what can Oracle do uh, to, to promote women in, in Apex more? All right, which one of us is going first? <laughs> <laughs> there are four of you on. <laughs> Well, I can give you uh, my perspective. I've only been at Oracle about four years and I've only been on the Apex team about a year and a half. So there's a very stark you know, contrast between the Apex team and the rest of Oracle. Uh, and I think you'll find that once you actually join the team and, and get a sense, but the Apex team really cares and they really uh, help each other out. The team is great to work with. It's literally one of the best teams that I've ever worked on. And I've been in IT for over 25 years. So, you know, I'm super excited about being on this team. I know that being an Oracle though is a slightly different flavor. Uh, and sometimes you get great teams and sometimes you get not great teams, but I think that's true of any company, no matter where you go work. But I think to Joel's question, like one of the things that I didn't know is how to get in touch with you ladies. So I think it'd be great. Maybe we should have a Women in Apex Slack channel. I'm more than happy to set this up and we should all just join and I will send an invite out to you guys. And we should include all of any women that we run into to join that Slack any channel women. so we can have that sounding board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could even uh, start a Twitter, Twitter feed or Instagram or something, Women in Apex, and I'll just post to it. Post something that we've developed, worked on, or inspired by. Uh, post when we're going to meet up and talk and, and review each other's work. I love that. I think, Karen, when, when, when you had uh, sent me your info, I think you had proposed a hashtag, uh, WI Apex, Women in Apex. I think we could, uh, we could definitely you use that. Yeah, I think that would, be, that would be great, just so that we can see each other and, and follow each other. Not that we don't want to see the other stuff, but just to, if we want to focus on, on, on our stuff. Perhaps we can get a little bit of visibility on apex.world. Would be helpful. Try. Yeah, and we can say pretty please to Jurgen. <laughs> yeah, we can bring. I think Monica and I brought it up to Jurgen um, in the past, uh, getting just a dedicated Slack channel in there. Um, we can we can do that can again. Try. Yeah. I think Joel's comment, at least how I I read it, is how can we as Oracle help you guys and reach you? Not you know. So it's not really a question for us. It's like how, it's asking you all what. Yes. But what do we do as Oracle employees to find you, to help you, to support you? I can I would, offer a bit of an answer. I would say, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gemma. No. I, I would say if Joel could prioritize our enhancement requests and um, and bugs, that would be my, <laughs> I love my it. top request. <laughs> I, love I was it. at Cisco. Um, Cisco Systems did outreach to community colleges and technical high schools, and they provided labs and books and semester-based curriculum to the school systems. And they were pretty aggressive in getting into um, school systems with accredited curricula that areas adopted. And I was working in Alaska and there were Cisco Academy classes popping out of Bush, Alaska. Um, and I've been trying to 
developed some sort of programs here in New England for four or five years. I've got a partnership with Quint Sigamon Community College in Worcester, Mass. But they're using some old Apex and they're not really pushing it. Um, but making it available at that level as an academic pursuit in a technical environment will improve all of our lives. <laughs> Recruiting, training, a place to do outreach. Um, I've tried to do outreach with local schools in Southern Vermont and nobody cares. I'm not doing games. So mm. um, there Oracle is no Academy. Have you worked at all with Oracle Academy? And it's something we can follow up on. Years ago, I helped write software that through Oracle Academy, we were able to spin up workspaces for kids to be able to go on and learn SQL and PL SQL, not so much Apex, but um, I don't know that they do as much outreach, but that's something that, that we could definitely, you know, look at. When yeah, I was and Sharon, could, could we add Apex to that? Because that would be great to be able to give middle schoolers PL SQL, SQL, and Apex. And then when we're doing community outreach and we're talking with schools and trying to do recruitment in a corporate environment, there's a feeder program. It's like youth football, youth soccer, whatever you want to call that lovely sport. You can't just walk out into a pitch and expect 18 year olds to be playing football if they didn't start at four and five. Um, and it, it takes a lot. So when I was working for Cisco Systems as an employee, I got appointed to the state education council to be this bridge between that corporate environment and the school environment. Um, and then all of a sudden finding Cisco folks and all sorts of levels in Alaska became pretty easy. And um, there's just, thank you for listening. <laughs> that would help. No, I mean, that's great. And we've got Bo on so we can sort of, you know, push some of this on her. I know, um, not specifically with Apex, but with SQL and PL SQL, we see lots and lots of college kids using live SQL and we want to be able to like push more curriculum and tutorials to people that way, you know, sort of any resources we can put out there for people to learn and to, to do better. I, I took some, I took somebody on about, oh, six, seven months ago, young lady who had zero tech experience, um, but she had the right mindset. And obviously the Apex curriculum that's available is fantastic. Um, that, that was just a, a wonderful, wonderful resource. But what I, I really struggled at was finding SQL and PL SQL resources. And yes, there obviously is live SQL of different scenarios and that, but not to the extent that there is say with Apex where you're going basically an A to Z of walking through SQL and PL SQL. And eventually I found something on Oracle App Oracle Academy and bought that for her. Um, but to me, it was SQL and PL SQL with a huge gap. So I thought from an education perspective for people, Apex, you guys have hit the, hit the nail on the head as usual. So one thing I wanted to say, um, just to answer Joel's question with the Oracle Apex team, I think you're already doing a lot of things to help us. Like just seeing the women that are on the team now that I know we're not hired because they're women, they're, they're great Apex resources is awesome. And I think that helps, uh, I don't wanna say younger, but newer women coming in, like I know there's that hurdle of getting them into Apex, but once they're in, seeing that there's someone similar to them on the Apex team is awesome. Yeah, I, I've loved lately seeing, I've, I feel like I've seen Monica a lot doing different webinars, Bo, you've been doing a lot too. And I think it's, it's so refreshing to, to see women in front of, in front, in our face, not in our faces, but out there. And, and uh, I think that's, that's really great. So the more, more of you we can see, I think it's, it's going to do, uh, it'll, it'll encourage more people to participate. Oh. Um, so moving on from our ladies in Oracle, we also have uh, business owners on the call. So we have Christina, who I think is one of the smartest women I know. I've worked with her for, for many, many years. You run a SaaS business, and you've got podcasts. We've got Gemma. Gemma, I remember seeing you at an open mic at K-Scope, I think it was in Chicago a few years ago. And I thought that was so cool. You came up and I 
I wanted to be you. I thought that was fantastic. Um, and, and Karen, I, you've been. Lager, that's why. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of Heineken on the side, so that got me up there. I remember it very well, and I thought it was it was so cool. And I think since then you. Oh, our host died. From each of you. You died. I and died. Am I back? You back. Am I back? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, my husband's in so much trouble. He's responsible for our <laughs> network. And I've been telling him, I said, it cuts off. He says it doesn't cut off. I said, it's going to cut off in the middle of my insider session for sure. Um, where did we, where did you lose me? I basically wanted to hear from our, our business owners a little bit uh, what, what that's been like for you, first of all. Why, why did you choose Apex? Uh, what it's been like? for you running your own businesses, anything you want to share about what you've been doing in the last few years would be, would be great. Christina, did you want to go first? I guess that's an invitation to go first, whether I want to or not. <laughs> um, why Apex? Apex was the last tool standing after doing sort of a competition. I had an application I wanted to build and we just ran through a bunch of tools and Apex was the winner in 2005. And I'd been out of programming for a couple of years and I, I hired that lady over there to <laughs> which, uh, which get me back up and running because um, I hadn't done any database stuff in a couple of years. Um, so since then we have two commercial products. Um, we have a nice team. We have full-time customer support. Um, we are, we would have introduced a brand new product this week, except we had all sorts of technical problems that had nothing to do with us or Oracle. Uh, so our launch for podcast flow got delayed until Tuesday the 13th. Um, and sadly, we were launching it in March, <laughs> right as COVID hit. And not a good time to launch No, anything. it was terrible. So no. we retreated for several months to figure out what the market was doing. So um, we launch again on Tuesday and it is a um, an Oracle-based product that we're hosting at Amazon Web Services that is available as a retail product. You go to our website, you run a credit card, it signs you up, it gets you connected with Okta. It's very, very cool. All sorts of very hands-off stuff. And um, it's our first go into retail software. Um, and in support of that, this year I started doing a podcast. So my 19th episode of that podcast went live yesterday. Wow. So you have to be one of the busiest women I know. <laughs> I took a nap this morning. Good for you. <laughs> So I think you have, everybody has so much exciting stuff going on. we we'll definitely, after this episode, I'm going to publish everyone's bios. Mark's putting links into the chat, but I want to make sure everyone has access to them. So we'll definitely be publishing everyone's, you know, Twitter bios, links to your, to your podcast, to your SaaS software, all of that. So, so, cause I'm sure everybody is going to want to learn more about that. Um, Gemma, you're also doing some, some cool some cool things with Cavanti. Yeah, we, we, we got started by accident. Um, it was really, a, uh, my, my introduction to Apex was I'd, I'd worked with Oracle applications for years and years and years doing lots of forms and reports and PLC, well not reports, and PLC SQL. Um, I had a mis midlife crisis and said I want to get out of the tech industry. So I went and got certified to do horse massage. And while I was out doing this, I realized that it was a big paperwork burden from a reporting and an invoicing and a just general practice management uh, perspective. So I wrote an application because I'd, I'd sorry, to take it a step back. I discovered HTML DB in a, in a prior position I was in. I wrote a couple of small applications of that, um, which was an obvious fix coming from a SQL and pure SQL background. So I wrote a, effectively, it was really a proof of concept that I used for my business. Um, I then showed it to various other practitioners from vets to chiropractors. Uh, they said, that's really cool. I want that. 
Um, so we got to work and uh, me and my business partner, who is by coincidence a, another woman, um, we built Cavanti. And um, it's 90% in Apex, there's a little bit of offline with uh, native apps, which uses um, um, REST data services to sync to Oracle. Um, and we've got lots and lots of cool stuff going on development wise and lots and lots more products coming out next week. Not ne next week, next year. I wish it was next week. Um, and this all runs on, um, on the Oracle Cloud. And you were doing some cool things with AOP as well, I think. Were you not or? I that... love AOP. I'm, I'm a big AOP fan, yeah. Um, no. lots and Christina, lots, yeah, lots I know Christina, of, you do a lot with AOP as well. Yeah, we, we do lots, um, a lot of lettering, a lot of um, Excel reporting. And then um, Amy, um, which I can never remember that. A Apex Media Extension was an absolute lifesaver to us because, because when Oracle pulled um, Oracle Intermedia from uh, when it was de-supported from Oracle 19, it was just such a, a very straightforward um, unplug and plug in for us. Um, so that's another thing we've, we've used extensively to uh, do image and in the future we'll be doing video manipulation as well with it. So nice. yes, big aim. Okay. Cool stuff. Um, Karen, did you want to tell us a little bit about your business and what you do? Sure. I, I don't have a product. I do consulting and I've been, um, and I never set out to be a consultant, but um, having gotten into Apex because of a contract with Oracle Consulting, um, actually, I still do some work for that same client and that was over 20 years ago. Um, and it, it wasn't that I said, oh, I'm going to be an Apex consultant. It's, um, this was the right tool to solve the business problem that they had. And uh, that, that client works with um, fisheries data. Um, and fisheries data is so much more fun than customers, products, and orders. Trust me, the rules are convoluted. And um, so we can use the Oracle database behind the scenes to, and, and generate the business rules and, and generate the interfaces that we need to make those rules happen. Um, anything government agency, their rules aren't, aren't simple or plain ever, and they're not static. So we had to build in flexibility. And Apex allowed us to do that very easily. Um, because I was in the right place at the right time and I knew people from going to conferences, um, I was invited into consulting and then it just turned into my own company and it's, I thought it was going to be a year or two and it just kept going. And um, I have wonderful clients um, that let me volunteer for Oracle user groups. Um, so I can, I can present and for any woman out there who hasn't, it is the most time consuming, scariest. Um, if you have any, hint of imposter syndrome, which I think most of us do, um, that, oh my God, I'm not good enough. All of that comes out. I'm petrified every time I present and um, I absolutely hate it. Yet for some weird reason, I keep doing it. Um, so I encourage you to go through all that and do it anyways. Um, <laughs> I was gonna yeah, say, so you're not making it sound very yeah, appealing yeah. and all of those <laughs> things that, all of those things yeah. that you've said, yeah, and, all of those and, things. That, and then the trick is do not read the reviews. Just don't read the reviews. Um, I did get the worst presenter ever review. Um, and at the same, you, you know, you have to read them all and you have to forget them as soon as you read them, delete them, just delete them out of your brain. Anyhow, but, um, I was, I was kind of rolled into my own company um, by the things I'd done with Oracle user groups and getting my name out there. And um, now not only do I have the fisheries clients, I have metal, medical diagnostics clients. I have some engineering clients. Um, they do not all have um, panic times at the same time, which is great. And um, 
state and fun, federal government is, you know, the rules don't mesh and, and I love the challenge of it. Um, I love doing that. Um, so I, you know, it wasn't a thing I chose. It's a thing I absolutely adore and, um, and I'll keep going as long as I can. Um, if you're, if you're on the fence or you're not sure you have what it takes, you know, talk to us. Um, I, I love the idea of the women in, in Apex Slack channel because I think as women, we, we tend to, you know, let, I know I let the guys take the limelight when I present a topic. Um, I'm not looking for the latest and greatest. I can name five or six names that are going to have that out there. Um, I want basics so people can learn, so people can learn in, um, get feel comfortable and go back to their companies and, and produce good stuff faster. Um, and I, I think we, you know, making sure we get that, that low end uh, beginner to midpoint and get that information out there that makes people feel more welcome in this field. And I think it, to me, and I just chip in there, if people are the, the, the whole scared factor of presenting, find a co-presenter the first time. So you've got someone else to, to back you up, whether it comes to Q and A's that you're not <laughs> sure about um, or whatever it is. To me, it's like the first time I, I like the first time I was going to do, do, do Boston. Okay. I was going to do that on my own. Then Jackie and I co-presented on the, the online version, which made it a breeze, frankly. Yeah, I think that's, that's great advice. I was also going to be a first time presenter at Boston. Um, and again, I was going to co-present with Jorge. So I think that's, that's a great segue into, you know, getting started. Um, I'm curious though, Karen and all of the ladies that, that do present or have presented. So you talk about, you know, the, the amount of work, the, the fear, the imposter syndrome. So, so what is it that you, yet you continue doing it? Um, and, and why do you feel this is an important thing to do? Because I, I really believe it is important for us to do more of that. Um, but I'm curious to hear from you, first of all, how, so how do you get beyond that and, and what keeps you coming back? Uh, should I go? <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Karen, I mean, Jackie, you've presented as well. Yeah. Monica, you've yeah. presented. So, so anybody that's in, the, because I think this is, um, it, it, it's really important. I want to, I, I would love to see more women presenting. I think this is how I got to know uh, a lot of my colleagues today at, at Insum and, and it, it's important for us to be out there. So I'd love to know you know, what, what keeps you coming back? Um, how, how, how you get over that fear and, and yeah, what, what keeps you coming back basically? I can try and answer. I'm, I, I echo a lot of what Karen said. Like I'm terrified every single time. I'm not terrified when I'm preparing, like preparing the presentation is kind of fun because you get to do some apex stuff and make some, you know, try to explain it. But when it comes to actually standing up in front of people, I'm okay in like a group like this. <laughs> but then when you have, not that I ever get a hundred people looking at me at a presentation, but you imagine that in your head, right? Like there's gonna be a hundred people out there and they're gonna look at me. And um, I'm gonna say, my thing that I was always terrified of before I started was getting a question I didn't know how to answer. Like I'm okay with what I put in the slides. Like I know that stuff, but it's right. always those people that raise their hand and ask something off the wall. And you just have to say to yourself, like, it's okay to tell people, no, I'm not going to cover that right now. You can say, you don't know. You can say, I know someone that knows that I can get you the answer. Like once you learn that you don't have to know everything, <laughs> just be the expert of what you're actually presenting and nothing outside of that matters at the time. So, um, and you also meet so many people like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, we do one presentation and you're that person that did the presentation on this and people will email you and ask you questions and you expand your network in a, in a really great way by just putting yourself out there a little bit. Yeah, for me, uh, why I wanna focus on presenting and why I've done it in the past is because it makes me a better person, improves my presentation skills and, it, and I'm a role model for other women that want to perhaps do this or get in the technical field and if they, Oh, man. Oh, Robin, you've, Robin, uh, you've, you've muted. You've muted. You've accidentally muted yourself. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sorry about that. So, um, so yeah, so why I want to get out there is because it, it, it allows me to be a role model for other people to, to say, Hey, I can do this too. If she can do it, well, I can get up there and do it, or I can learn that technology. And, and it's important for women to see that. And then I'm not sure where I'm muted, but I, you know, it's important for me to be able to get better at this. And the way to get better is to do it. And as everyone said, I had that same, same thing going on. It was, oh my gosh, when we get to the questions, you know, are they going to ask me something I don't know? And most of the time, what I happily find out is that this is the most fun part of the whole conversation. I'm walking around the room, I'm talking, I'm answering the questions. If I don't know a question, I just tell them I can get back to them or, or you know, I'll research it and, and follow up in an email. Uh, but it, it's been fun and scary. It's, it's scary getting ready. Once I'm gone, you know, it's like, once you jump off the boat, it's okay. Or, you know, but it's, it's getting ready to go. Yeah. I, I think I do it because I want to give back. That's how I learn most of my, well, that's how I used to learn. Um, now I learn by, you know, figuring out the next topic to present on and, um, and I, I'm terrible. I, I think my topic is this big and it ends up it's this big or, or this big. And um, then you have to narrow it down. But I learn more by presenting. And, um, and I'm giving back to these user groups. Um, you know, I, I don't have, um, you know, I'm my boss, but my boss does not have a giant uh, education fund. I'm not going to go to Oracle training. Um, I wouldn't get the same stuff from Oracle training, no offense, Joel. Um, what, what Apex has tons of great stuff out there, but the stuff I, I learn at conferences and now at webinars um, and all this virtual stuff that's out there is, is a level beyond. And then the connections I make at these conferences, that's where I fill in the gaps. Wait, you kind of do this, but I need to do this. Will this work? What do you think? And, and the connections are incredible because if, if I'm stuck, even though I, you know, I don't have 10 people in my office, I know who to contact for this or that. Um, and that's invaluable. And I want to keep that rolling. Um, and if I don't give back, then who's can? I, I'm in a position where I can. I, I only have four-legged children at home. I'm waiting for her to pop her face in any minute there. Um, and, and I can. I'm at a point in my career where you know, I'll, sure, I'll go to a conference and I'll stay a weekend and have fun. Um, and my clients are great as long as I get my work done. Um, they're happy. And, and usually what I present on, and this is key, is some business problem that wasn't straightforward that I had to figure out how to make it work. That's valuable to somebody else. So every one of us, you know, here in, in photos, and out there listening has had one or more of those problems. That's a worthy presentation. And I, I kind of got, um, I volunteered real early in my career for IOUG and uh, uh, reviewing papers back when we had papers, that'll date me a little, um, and reviewing conference submissions. And after, into the second year of that, they, they all said to me, where's yours? And I said, oh, no, no, no. I, I just review, you know, and they said, no, 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 we want one of yours in here. And, um, and that was on Oracle forms. I even forget exactly, but, um, so I've been scared every year since then. <laughs> All um, right. So it never gets easier is what I'm hearing. Great. A little easier. <laughs> a little easier. A little easier. But I love, I love the advice of, of starting with, with business problems that you've solved. And I think we were we all do really cool things, whether it's with our, with our clients or on projects that we're working on. And I think sometimes it's hard to recognize that, you know, what we've just done is something that's valuable. Um, you know, we always, we tend to imagine that other people are doing, you know, much more difficult or much more uh, complex, complex things. I think that that's, that's a challenge is to, to recognize that, you know, uh, recognize the value in our own projects. And, and think and and share it with uh, with others. Um, I'm conscious of the of the fact that we've got a couple of minutes left. My my lovelies from Insom, we haven't heard from you very much. <laughs> I wanted to give you a, a little opportunity as the as the newbies uh, in the group to if you have anything you'd like to say or share or or ask our our 
Yeah, well, How I would like to... today? I would love to hear from you. Um, I, I have a question. Well, I think all of you have answered this question, but I would like to, to hear like a tip of you about presenting or being exposed in the community. Because in my case, I have, I have presented here in, in, well, I'm in Peru. So first it's in Spanish, so for me it's easier because it's my mother language. Um, but I don't know, maybe a tip from you that about the presenting or the Twitter, um, I would like to, to hear and, uh, and I will appreciate. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. You, okay. <laughs> I know your your presentation that you did in Peru. It, it was it was great. I know it went well. Like you can do it. There, I mean, I know it's scary, but you can absolutely do it. You've got what it takes. So I know you. Thank you. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And also now we're going to have our women in Apex hashtag, right? So we're all going to encourage each other and boost each other up. I think that'll that'll make things easier as well. So your first tweet will be all over it, Marling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, Marlene, there's another thing. Uh, take advantage that now the all the most of the events are now virtual. So take advantage of that, and you can forget all the people that is uh, that is attending, that are attending the the session, and you can focus on your subject and your presentation. So take advantage of this time. I think it's, it could be helpful. Yes, definitely. Uh, I must say it's, um, it's great to hear you all because as Michelle knows, uh, Merlin knows, I'm always on behind of the scene. I never presented because I'm supporting events or sharing some posts in Ibero Apex. So maybe because I'm really shy and I I have the all the fears that you mentioned, I'm going to I gonna miss something, I gonna uh, give a wrong answer, I didn't know the answer, that all the stuff, and I'm still learning and trying to improve, and I had the, the opportunity to present. Uh, hearing all of you is great, and maybe give me the courage to start to present, <laughs> maybe in future, but at the moment, I'm behind the scenes. <laughs> Well, the, the good thing is you've heard everyone has the same fear. We're all thinking about the same thing. So it's normal. Put that to the side and focus on what you're delivering and just do it. Just Yes, Ramona. Just to chime in on this, I guess the big question is when you're good enough to present. I mean, when you're prepared enough, good enough, put together enough in terms of like, be there so w when w like it, it seems like the right time to go out there and and present like furthers away from the present each year like no it's not gonna be this year it's going to be next year well next year comes right and next year it will be ne like it's this like this ever never ending cycle where you ask yourself well when is the right time it seems like the right answer it's not next year seems like for most of us most of us like it's never <laughs> which is which is sad <laughs> it should not be like this it should not be like this i guess this is because uh it's it's hard to take risks it's a risk right you expose yourself you're making yourself vulnerable right in front of all these people and probably that's one thing it's that risk that we need to take and it's probably easier I hope so, because I've heard from Karen that it's not <laughs> like maybe it's getting it's getting easier each time to take that risk. And um, it doesn't maybe, necessarily maybe, get easier, but you know right. what to expect at the end. Mm -hmm. All right. Keegan. Keegan. Hi. Yeah. Um, I haven't actually presented on any APEX topics or at any um, APEX related conferences, but I have presented on other topics. And one thing that's really helped me in this area is to kind of think about what's the worst thing that can happen and what's the best thing that could happen out of doing it. Like the worst thing is usually a question comes up you can't answer or you have a little bit of a technical blip or somebody leaves a bad review. 
is that really the worst thing in the world? I, it, like, it seems like it going into it, but later on it really isn't. But some of the best things that could come out of it is you get your name and face out there, you meet new people, you learn something new. Um, so usually that tends to outweigh it, but it doesn't seem that way going into it. <laughs> Um, but that's usually how I kind of look at things. Um, it's super scary going up to it, but um, has anybody ever regretted presenting? No. No. And, and I have had all of those things, those worst things that can happen. I've had my screen die. I've had, um, I've had the whole computer die. I've had, I, I, I had to use someone else's machine. I've had, um, the the guy in the front row kidnapping the session i've had I, I told you i got my worst presenter review which i think was from that guy because i didn't <laughs> answer his question um which was so esoteric that it, it could even be done anyways so but the rush you get at the end the feeling of confidence the, the learning sorry hey child um <laughs> she's Bring excited too. Um, and she's deaf so she can't try to be quiet there you go um, the rush you get at the end and so every time um, I learn more than I ever thought about my topic that I thought I knew um, so I, I learn more I meet new people I get new connections and I get more confidence in myself in general which mysteriously all goes away the next time I stand up there to present, but um, I know I'll get through it. So it, there, there's a growth in there somewhere, but it, it's the learning and the connections and the giving back that I think keeps me going. And it's really, really worth it. And to get started, just submit. You, you don't have to even start getting scared until you get that acceptance letter. Then you're like, oh my gosh, I got to put the presentation together and perfect it. And and you'll be perfecting that presentation right up until you give it. And then you're going to replay it in your mind after you gave it. And then um, at, at some point, a few weeks later, you let it go because you submit for the next conference. Oh, dear. Oh. Well, Ramon, I, I think, yes, yes, go ahead. Can I throw a tip in And this may be frowned upon by some people, but I'll throw it out there anyway. To me, um, being scared of presenting is, I don't see the difference of if, you, if you're scared of presenting or you're scared of flying, for example, it all comes down to one thing and that's anxiety. Um, now, I suffer from anxiety. Um, presenting terrifies me. Um, the last, I presented in London a couple of years ago on the Oracle Cloud and I took a Xanax half an hour before I presented. <laughs> And I was totally fine. It was, I went up there, I was confident, I was fine. There was no issues whatsoever. And I don't see the difference. It's anxiety. If you need something, go and see your doctor. Now, lots of people may frown at this suggestion, but it does work. Yeah, well, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure anxiety can play a role. I think there's something more at play here than, than I, I'd imagine anxiety makes things worse. Um, but I, lo I love the advice from Jackie of just do it, from Karen, um, just present, just submit your abstract. I don't think any of us or anybody, I don't think this is a female thing, ever feels completely ready. I mean, I've at, at any conference I've been to, the presenters have been working on their presentations up until T minus one. So I think, I think it's a question of just having the courage to, to try, submit the abstract, put out the tweet. Uh, jump up in front of stage. And I, I, I look forward to, to seeing more of you at uh, future events very, very soon. I wanna make sure before, because we're already five past the hour, that before we, we say goodbye, we have some action items from this group, because I think we've had a really great conversation. So are we in agreement that we're gonna start a Women in Apex Slack channel? Who, who owns that bow? Is that something that you're gonna, that you're gonna do? Thank Fantastic. You okay, and we're gonna start a Women in Apex hashtag which i think will be fantastic and we are going to do quarterly get-togethers i would love that if not more frequent i think that would be fantastic i want to thank you all for joining us today it's been a pleasure speaking to you all um, i look forward to to many more um, and i invite you all to join us next week on another episode of the insider we have uh chris rice and jeff smith will be talking to us yeah. about boards so 
hopefully something of interest to all of you. Thank you all, ladies. Really, uh, really enjoyed it. It was a pleasure speaking to you today. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Mark, can you, you. Can you take us away? Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 You've been listening to the Insum Insider.